Palestinian security personnel, members of the Hamas military wing in Kalkilia early this morning. A seven-hour firefight ensued when Palestinian police surrounded a house in the West Bank town in order to arrest Hamas gunmen inside. Palestinian sources named the two dead Hamas men as Muhammad Yassin and Mahmoud Asaman, commander of the Isidin al qassam brigades in Kalkilia. Yassin reportedly died after attempting to detonate an explosives belt alongside the Palestinian policemen. Three Palestinian police officers and a civilian owner of the house were also killed in the firefight. Five PA officers were wounded, and one of them was evacuated to Israel for medical treatment. It was the deadliest outbreak of Palestinian factional violence since PA President Mahmoud Abbas began a crackdown against Hamas two years ago. Gaza Hamas spokesman Abu Obaida condemned the awful crime committed by the gangs and collaborators of the Palestinian Authority, and he promised a tough and harsh response. I think that the Israeli government uh, is making every possible effort in order to reach the agreements, but in the meanwhile, what we see that the Palestinians among themselves have, uh, to say the least, difficulties. Uh, we see violent accidents all around uh, Judea and Samaria. Uh, we sincerely hope that order will be restored and we'll have finally a partner to talk to. Well, a countdown is on. The London Sunday Times reported today that U.S. President Barack Obama has given himself two years to achieve a diplomatic breakthrough regarding a two-state solution between Israel and the Palestinian Authority. The Times said Obama also will unveil his plans to reach out to the Arab and Muslim world when he visits the Middle East later this week. In other developments, senior Israeli officials believe PA well, President Mahmoud Abbas is trying to undermine the government of Benjamin Netanyahu following Abbas's talks with Obama in Washington last week. The Palestinians appear confident that demands from the Obama administration for Israel to free settlement activity could lead to the toppling of the Netanyahu by his coalition partners if Netanyahu gives in to the pressure. This would clear the way for opposition leader Tzipi Livni of Kadima to assume power. The latest violence between Hamas and Fatah is part of their struggle for political control of the West Bank. That's the view of Dr. Mordechai Kedar of bar -Ilan University, who spoke with IBA's Leia Zender today. Actually, this is a fighting for who is the ruler of the West Bank, whether it is Abu Mazen, the PLO, or Hamas, as they are already celebrating two years in, in uh, Gaza. And uh, this fight is actually resembles the rift inside the Palestinian Authority, which nobody can deny. But would you agree that uh, Abbas and Fatah came out on top uh, today, especially the message they sent to Washington showing that here we are fighting Hamas? Definitely, and I think this even was ordered by the Americans in order to prepare for the uh, speech of Obama on Thursday to show that if, when he talks about Palestinian state, he means Abu Mazen, since Abu Mazen can maintain law and order on at least on the West Bank, and this is why when he talks on one, one consolidated Palestinian state, he means Abu Mazen. Now Hamas, as you know, has not been known in the past for its restraint. Can we expect Hamas now to retaliate? Definitely. This will be revenge. But uh, Hamas now wants to show that Abu Mazen cannot deliver in the West Bank. And I think this would be a very big motivation for Hamas to maybe even launch a terrorist attack inside the West Bank against uh, the Fatah or against the PLO uh, security organizations. At the same time, what you say is interesting. You say that both Fatah and Hamas are trying to show how much they can keep law and order, one in Gaza, the other in the West Bank. This is very different from the past when they were both trying to show how uh, violently they could oppose Israel. Don't forget that uh, Hamas already is a government for two years or almost in Gaza, and they want to show that they can maintain law and, law and order. And they might be even better than, uh, uh, than the PLO. So it is, since before it was a fighting between, between terrorist uh, organizations, now it is a, a competition between two governing elites. And what you're saying, I would imagine, is that uh, any chance of reconciliation of a unity government between Fatah and Hamas, that's not going to happen? No, no, it's not going to happen. This is a permanent divorce, as we say, they say in Arabic. This divorce cannot be uh, redeemed. 
Dr. Hedow, you mentioned the upcoming speech by uh, U.S. President Obama on Thursday uh, in Egypt. And as you know, many Israelis are extremely worried by the American position on the Middle East. How do you see Obama's role here? Uh, his tilt is apparent tilt toward the Arab world. Uh, on what is this based? I think he's trying to be nice to the Arab regimes, not the Arab world, mm -hmm. by uh, squeezing Israel. And uh, I think that he is totally mistaken. He is losing his best ally in the Middle East while relying on regimes which have no legitimacy and uh, their stability is in question. Uh, he is acting like a rookie who is trying to command over an uh, armored division. And uh, you I put it all down to his lack of experience? Lack of experience and the fact that he is listening too much to interests to interests who uh, mislead him, especially the King of Jordan and the King of Saudi Arabia, who are more worried uh, from Hamas. This is why they want a Palestinian state. They, they, they don't uh, want a, a Hamas state uh, on their border. And this is why they preach so heavily for establishing a Palestinian state, even on the exp expense of the state of Israel and the security of the state of Israel. Iran and Hezbollah were behind last year's plot to blow up